Hi, I'm going to show you how a biconcave or diverging lens works and how we define its focal length. So we have five parallel rays coming in and hitting this lens. We're going to use Snell's law to predict what happens to these rays. So when we do with Snell's laws, we always draw a perpendicular line to the surface. So I'm going to look at this first incoming ray and I draw a line that's approximately uh, perpendicular to that surface. And then what happens is as the light enters a higher index of refraction, the angle it makes with respect to that dotted line is going to decrease. So in this case, it's going to bend up just a little bit, or maybe a lot. Depends on what the lens is made of and how much it's curved, but uh, the angle certainly goes down and the light ray will bend up. And then I draw another perpendicular to this surface here. And what happens is that at that point, as it's exiting, the index of refraction is going down. So the angle with respect to that dotted line has to go up. So it bends up again. So something like that. Okay. So decreasing angle as it goes in, increasing angle as it goes out. And then all of these rays are going to do the same thing, okay? Decreasing the angle with respect to normal as they enter, increasing the angle with respect to normal as they exit. So this one will spin something like this. This one, its incoming angle is zero, so it just remains zero if it hits dead on perpendicular. This one will bend down a little bit, obeying Snell's law. This one will bend down even more, obeying Snell's law. And what we get is a series of diverging rays, and that's why it's called a diverging lens. Um, it tends to uh, spread out the rays. So they obviously don't converge to a single point on the other side. So it's not, we don't have a focal length defined in the same way as we would for a biconvex lens. So instead, what we do is look at where these rays appear to have originated. So if we take all of the outgoing rays, this one, okay, and work our way backwards in a straight line, and then same with this one, work our way backwards in a straight line, work our way backwards with this one, work our way backwards with this one, and then this outgoing ray following back, we get to a point in space where all of these outgoing rays from a parallel source appear to have originated from when viewed on the other side. So uh, that point is called the focal point, and then the distance between the center of the lens and that point, so this distance here, would be called the focal length. And we, of course, we use the symbol F. And to distinguish this mathematically from a, uh, from a biconvex converging lens, we define that to be a negative focal length. And that's what we throw into the formulas that are associated with these, uh, with these types of lenses. Okay, so I'll, uh, late in another video, I'll show you how to, uh, how to draw uh, what are called principal ray diagrams for situations where we don't have parallel rays coming in. How do, how do they behave? Okay, so uh, thanks for watching.